Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair Belair. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at making silkscreen graphics in Eagle. So I like to use the manufacturing tab quite a bit uh, when bringing our Eagle CAD designs into Fusion 360. The manufacturing tab does a really good job of previewing um, kind of what your board is going to look like. So you have the option to uh, look at the top side or the bottom side and you can get a really good visual of what your board is going to look or at least can look like. You have options here to change different colors. So if you want to change the color of the solder mask or the silk screen, uh, you can do so here. And this is a really good way to know if your silk screen graphics are on the correct layers. So if I were to bring this design into Fusion 360, none of our uh, logos and silk screen graphics would show up because I don't see them in the preview. So this is uh, a design by Lamar, F Lamar Freed, Lady Ada. And if you know uh, about Eagle CAD a little bit, you would know that there are uh, a bunch of different layers and things, and they're supposed to go in different, um, different layers uh, are for different uh, aspects of your PCB design. So in this case, uh, I happen to know that the silkscreen graphics are on layer 200 and layer 201. I just turned it on and you can get an idea why uh, we might want to have our silkscreen graphics on a different layer. It, it looks really messy and it's kind of hard to decipher. And that's just the bottom layer. Let's look at the top layer. Now it looks even more funkier. It's kind of hard to decipher, right? So um, to bring this into uh, the correct layer, you gotta understand which layer is the correct layer. Well, we're looking at layer 21. So I'm gonna turn off the top routing, that's layer one, and the bottom routing, that's layer 16. Layer 17 is the pads. Most of the layers do have some naming going on here, which you can kind of figure out what they do. Dimensions are the dimensions. T place is really where all your silkscreen graphics uh, should go if you want to be on the top of the board. If you want to be on the bottom of the board, you want to go with B place for bottom. So you can see here, um, they're colored yellow for top, pink for the bottom. So we can turn those on and off. And then uh, if we were to activate layer 200, you can get an idea of, uh, of all the graphics in here. Now this is um, actually one footprint, one object that contains all of the things you see here, all the graphics and stuff. So this is actually uh, using the bitmap import script that's built into, uh, into Eagle. So that's kind of how Adafruit uses, um, that's, how they that's how we bring in our custom silkscreen graphics. We use uh, that importer script and it gets imported as a bitmap. But um, we need to figure out how to get this footprint on the right layer, right? So the first thing is, um, is where is the origin? I can't select this object. So what I wanna do is since it is a T place object, I want to turn on the T origins layer. That's layer 23. So the T place is, is where we want it to be. The T origin is where our origins are for anything that's going to be on the top layer. You can see there's this big yellow crosshair down here at the corner, and that is the origin for this entire object, right? So if I go to properties, we can get a look at um, what the footprint is named and what library it is coming from. Also, X and Y position. It is zero, zero, which is good. It's gonna help us with alignment and things a little bit later. But for now, we know where it's coming from and we know what library it's in. So what I had to do is actually open that library. So here's the silks dot LBR, it's a library file for Eagle. And this is where uh, our Adafruit team contains all of their uh, silkscreen graphics. So it's much easier to have our silkscreen graphics as an object so we can place them in different boards, such as the, the Feather logo, the Flora font, uh, Fona, we even have some Hackster IO and a, a Hackaday logo here. Really easy to kind of bring these into your design, right? So if we go down here, I can see that I am working on the Itsy Bitsy M4 board, and this is the uh, the footprint. So all I got to do is right click and edit, and then I'm gonna and then it's gonna open it in this editor. So now that we are in this editor, we have full control over all of these objects. Now, when you're using the bitmap import script for Eagle, 
you're going to notice that uh, your bitmaps are actually turned into these individual tiny, tiny little objects, right? As we can zoom in, you can see just how tiny they are. So um, that's kind of how the script works. Uh, so now we have to figure out a way to turn all of these little all of these little items into on the right layer. So what layer is this on? Well, it's going to be on whatever layer the original import script used. In this case, I believe it's layer 200. Yes, it's layer 200. And we can use our visible layers window uh, to kind of hunt that down and find out. Um, since I'm not the one who created the original silkscreen graphic, I kind of had to do a little bit of, of exploring. But here it is. It's on layer 200, and that's fine. So let's keep it on layer 200. And what I'll do is I'll turn on also layer 21. There's nothing there yet, but that's where we want our stuff to go. So I'll hit OK. Now I need to select all of these items. And the best way to do that is using the, uh, the group uh, tool, I guess we can call it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click and drag to make a marquee selection to kind of encompass all of the items in this footprint. They turned a little bit of a brighter blue with the selected. Uh, I will now use the change tool, and this gives you a little drop down and it's like, what you'd like to change? I'd like to change the layer. So let's go ahead and select layer. And now it's going to tell you, it's going to ask you, what layer would you like to put all that stuff in? I want it to be on layer 21, T place. So with that selected, I'll hit OK. Nothing's going to happen until you right click somewhere on the canvas, right click and you'll see this option, change group. Now, as soon as I click that, keep your eye on all the blue graphics. There we go, it is now on layer 21. Sometimes there's a layer, there's a little bit of a visual glitch. All you gotta do is just uh, click on layer 21 here under layer and that should fix that glitch. So now all of the items in this, uh, in this footprint are now on the layer that we want. So let's go ahead and save that. That is now saved. Unfortunately, we can't really replace this, although that sounds like there'd be a really good thing to do. The UI for replacing is a little bit um, not easy. If I were to replace it, I'd have to search here for a library that isn't really here yet. So I find it easier if you just go to library, open the library. Um, we kind of had it already open, but uh, I closed it. So I'm gonna open it again. And since we did save that, we should be able to bring in, uh, yeah, it looks updated here in the preview thumbnail. We can just right click and say, add to board. And it's gonna add it to the board. I don't see it yet. There is a bit of a visual thing here you have to know. Let's go ahead and go to layer settings and actually turn on T place in there, hit okay. And now you can see it is actually uh, being added. I have the add tool. Uh, active right now, and I'm just going to drop this by uh, left clicking somewhere over here. Now I can use uh, the info tool and delete this guy by right clicking on it and say delete since we don't want it. Then I can right click properties and then in the positions input, I can put zero, zero, hit apply and that'll set it right where we want it to be. I'll hit okay to accept that. And now when I go to the manufacturing tab, It'll give it a second to refresh. And we want to go to the top side, not the bottom side. And there it is. So there's our top silk screen. Uh, so that's really nice. That's really easy to do for the top layer. The bottom layer is where it gets a little confusing. So let's go ahead and get our bottom layer sorted out. So again, we'll go to, hopefully I have the library still open. Yes, I do. I just alt tabbed out of the, to, the, to the window here. This is the, the silks library that I'm working with. And I want to change the bottom layer now. So you can see here that somehow the thing disappeared. So I'm going to go right click, edit. And now it's disappeared because of the layer sets again. So we want to go down here to layer 201. That's where it is. Layer 201. And hit OK. So we're going to do a very similar method. Um, but Instead of putting it on layer 22, we're actually gonna put it on layer 21, which is the top place. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So again, we want to use our group tool. I will do marquee selection to encompass all of the elements in there. And then I will use the change tool to say I want to change the layer. So here's the layer. And I want it to be on layer 21. And there's a very important reason why it's on the top layer instead of the bottom layer 
because we need to do something special. So let's go ahead and put it on layer 21. That's the top. I know it needs to be on the bottom, but follow me. Hit OK. OK. Now, again, I have to right click and say change group. And now I'll actually put that on the T place layer. Again, this is going to be on the bottom layer, but here's what we need to do. We need to put it on the top layer first. You notice that this is not mirrored yet. And we're going to have to in just a second. So let me go ahead and save that. OK, that is now saved. Uh, I will go back to the contents. And then this time I'm going to say um, itsy bitsy bottom, M4 bottom. Right click, add it to the board. And here it is, right? So watch what happens as soon as I, um, as soon as I click on the mirrored button right up here in this little uh, panel here, I'll click on that mirrored and all of a sudden our object disappears. This is because the behavior of Eagle, when you mirror an item, is essentially putting it on the bottom layer because it is mirrored. So let's go ahead and turn on our layer settings and actually turn on our B place layer. That's layer 22. And that is our bottom layer. Now I can, um, I can hide the top layer, which is layer 21, and I can leave the bottom place layer. Hit OK. Now you can see here that, hey, there's our object, our updated uh, element here. So I'm going to click it and place it right there. Now, I don't see the origin of it yet. I'm going to switch my tool over to the info tool. That way I can kind of see things now that I don't have this dragging element. And I can go back over to layer settings and turn on B origins because I need to find the origin of that thing. I can turn off the top origins um, and just leave the B place in the B origins. Those are what I want to work on. So now I can see these giant um, crosshairs their origins. I can now uh, mess with them. I actually want to right click, move it over up here, right click on the original item that we have modified. Well, you really didn't modify, but we're going to now. And uh, we can use the properties to find out uh, where the position is. It looks like I need to put uh, 1.4. So I'll just copy that and I will delete this. Right click, delete. And now I can say uh, right click, properties on their updated element, and then just paste in that position there uh, and zero this one out because I believe it was zero. I'll hit apply, just get a preview. And yeah, that is smack perfect in the center there. Um, now, if we check, take a look at our manufacturing tab, huzzah, all of, our, all of the graphics are now on our bottom layer looking really nice. I can now export this as an image or bring it into Fusion 360 and start making my 3D model for our custom graphics. So the real, the real kind of um, weird thing or thing to know about, to be aware of, to take note, is that when you're trying to get your footprint to be on the bottom layer, it, it needs to be on the top layer and then mirrored. Because if this wasn't mirrored, your um, your graphic or your footprint is going to be flipped. So that's just kind of this behavioral thing that you have to kind of consider when um, playing around with the ordering of your elements. So let's go ahead and play around with some other stuff. I'm going to delete this for now and take a look at uh, another example here. Let's say we want our, our uh, hack, Hackster logo. Let's say we want to add this to the board. I'll add to the board. And I can't see it yet because I don't have the layer active, right? Makes sense. So let me turn that on. It's going to be T place. Or maybe it's B place. It's already active. I'm not sure. When I hit OK, you'll see, yep, yep. It looks like it's on the uh, layer 21. If I wanted this on the bottom layer, come up here to mirror. Click on that, and it instantly went pink because it is now on layer 22, which is the bottom. And well, it's mirrored because it's going to be on the bottom, right? So when I click this down here, open up my manufacturer, you should see that Hackster logo come up there. It's nice and clean and it's flipped the right way because this, this is the way mirroring works in Eagle. <laughs> but uh, hopefully this, this is, gives you a better understanding 
let's let's grab another logo let's i like this dragon logo i believe that's from phil b paint your dragon so right click add to board um uh, the interesting behavior is if you use right click it will kind of uh move it around a little bit which is kind of neat i still need to turn on that uh that mirror if i want to mirror it correctly if i want it on the right now you can see it's pink on the bottom layer which is where i want it and now i can p place this like here again my layer settings is is, is really critical to have uh, an understanding of your origins because now I can know, I can see that my origin for my dragon is right over there. So I'm gonna switch to the info tool and I can move this around. I can move this Haxter logo um, more over here, like this, for example. That looks kind of neat. Let's see what that looks like in the preview. Uh, that's pretty cool. Hax, a little, little bit of an issue there, but it's a really great way to, uh, to see if your silkscreen graphics are, are in the right spot, if vias are being in the way or whatever, so. That is how uh, I was able to get um, the layering. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this. Yeah, there you go. Some some silkscreen graphics in Eagle CAD. Now it's really easy to export an image or make a 3D model using Fusion 360. Let me guys know what you think of this tutorial. If you have any issues or questions of that nature, please drop them down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, remember to make a great day.